Some of the younger viewers probably don't remember that Sony Ericsson branded phones used to be sold some years ago. The company was a joint venture that was established in 2001 by Japanese consumer electronics company Sony and the Swedish telecommunications company Ericsson. The plan was to take on Nokia as the then crown prince of mobile manufacturers at the time. But after 10 years, the two companies parted ways. Sony took full control of the mobile phone venture in a bid to catch up with the two-horse race between Android and iPhones, with Ericsson taking a consumer-facing back seat for the time being. Ericsson received $1.5 billion in cash for its 50% share of the joint venture. On your screens now you see a Xperia S, the first Sony-only flagman from January 2012 or 11 years ago. And this was my personal phone back in the day. My previous phone was the first Samsung Galaxy S, and I decided to try something new. At this time, Sony Xperia S was different. The design was unique with the transparent strip across the front that also acts as an antenna. General phone navigation was performed using three capacitive touch buttons located between the screen and the clear antenna panel. Another unique touch was the ability of Sony to include both a dedicated HDMI port and a camera shutter release without interrupting the design of the handset. HDMI port in a smartphone? There is no such thing these days. But there is no need. Everything is online in the cloud now. You can stream it on your TV. There is no need to connect via a cable. Another thing not seen these days is removable back cover. But nevertheless, the battery is non-removable, and we can find the Sony Ericsson name and model number. The development of the model took place during the separation. On the front of the phone is the Sony logo, but at the back is the Sony Ericsson logo. But let's try to use the phone nowadays. The main problem is the app availability. The phone is using Android 4, 1.2. Too old Android version, but I am still logged into a Google account. YouTube wants an update, but the update is not compatible with the device anymore. The requirements for using the YouTube app on an Android phone are version 5.0 Lollipop or later, and 1 GB of RAM. Xperia S has this amount of RAM, but apparently is not enough. There are some third-party ROMs for Xperia S based on Android 8.1, but I didn't have the time to try one. Maybe in another video. Google app says unable to open Discover, but despite that I can use the search engine. Discover is a feature in the Google Android app that allows users to explore articles, videos, and other types of content that may be of interest to them based on their search history, location, and other factors. It appears as a feed of personalized content on the Google app's home screen. The content presented in Discover is algorithmically generated by Google, using machine learning and other data analysis techniques to understand the user's interests and preferences. Gmail is fine and Chrome works. It is Chrome version 67 from 2018, but it works. At least for now. I can't watch videos in YouTube in the app, but I can do it in Chrome. The specs of the phone were good for the time. Fantastic 4.3-inch screen with Sony's Bravia HD technology, 12-megapixel Exmor R camera, Qualcomm Snapdragon S3 chipset, 32 gigabytes storage, DLNA and Android Gingerbread, 2.3 at launch. Yeah, Android 2.3. That long ago. But nowadays it is obviously very slow.
I decided to try the camera too, of course. With modern phones and software, we now take good smartphone photo quality for granted. But let's see what happened more than 10 years ago. There is certainly a difference. But I think that the progress is more from the software side and processing, and not so much from the optics side. The only rear camera is 12 megapixel, while the front is 1.3. Xperia S can record videos too, at 720p resolution and 30 frames per second. Sony Xperia S was not a perfect phone back in the day, but it was a different one. And where are Sony phones now? For one reason or another, they are unofficially gone. Yes, they still have two phones, Xperia 5 and Xperia 1, but who is buying and using them? Very, very, very few people. And the rest of the phones of other brands are starting to look more and more alike. Xperia S will go down in history as the first Sony smartphone with a unique and distinctive design.